out here in the pasture. I'm gonna show you what we're doing now to feed our sheep and goats. It's been, uh, we have a bunch of snow melt. Now it's raining, so it's getting pretty muddy here. This is our mud season. This in spring. So what we're doing is I'm taking square bales and I'm throwing the flakes out here in the pasture where they can spread the manure and eat on ground that isn't quite so muddy. I'm trying to keep the animals cleaner and healthier this way. So I've just flake, 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 flake. We took three bales and we threw them over the fence all the way down the fence line to keep our sheep and our goats from eating out of what I'll show you next. Still leftover snow from our snowstorm. So this is where we've been feeding them until it got so muddy and nasty. feeder that Rochelle and Luke built for me using hay netting and scrap sheet metal and lumber that we had left over from previous projects. That feeder works really well. However, you can see that it gets really muddy and nasty around it up here. So, in order to keep them out of Yep, I actually had to wear boots because I don't want to barefoot this stuff. So, we've uh, started feeding them square bales instead of the round bales because they're easier to spread around. And we've stopped using this round bale feeder. Just a warning to anybody who uses this style round bale feeder. This is designed for sheep and goats. They're supposed to reach through the bars and eat the round bale from the bottom up. The problem is, is they eat the round bale from the bottom and it turns into like a mushroom. And then they'll have their heads between the bars and the bale will tip over, pinching whoever's on the wrong side when it tips, pinching their head in between the bars and trapping them in the feeder. And it seems like if not every round bale we feed, every other round bale we feed, I have to come out and try and lift a 400 pound round bale off the head of a sheep or a goat who's pinched in between the metal bars and the bale. So we have stopped using this feeder as convenient as it was for the primary reason it traps sheep and goats heads in the bars. And another thing I don't like about it is there's considerably more waste. You see, this is where we had it before. And there's a lot more waste than you see around our square bale feeder. You can see underneath the square bale feeder, there's minimal waste. So the square bales allow us to feed them a little more mobile. We can move around the pasture a little easier, not tear things up so much. 
try and keep them out of the mud as long as we can while spreading our nutrients throughout the pasture instead of piling up all of the nutrient and waste in one area. What do you think, goat? You like it better when you're not standing in mud? No? Hi. Hi, sheep. That's my matriarch. She's the leader of the flock. She's the friendliest one. And she's the leader, which is nice because I get her to follow me, the rest of the sheep will follow me. Yeah, you guys aren't so friendly. See, this is where they've been eating. They've left a little bit on the ground, but they'll come back and clean it up once they go up and get a drink. And uh, we're feeding them three bales a day for about 35 sheep and five or six goats. Hay bales are like eight bucks, eight dollars a bale this year. That's about 24 bucks a day. <coughs> make sure I'm making as much use out of that hay as I can I'm not piling it all up in one big manure pile up front looks like we've got some mole activity out here well buggers really digging it up now the project I came out here to do We've had a short in our fence for the last few weeks and hadn't been able to find it, but I found it. So I'm going out to uh, address that problem now using these broken sections of temporary plastic fence posts. Now, when these posts break, instead of throwing them away, I save them for situations just like the one I'm about to show you. Probably should have brought my tripod, tripod out with me, but I wasn't thinking about doing a video until I was halfway out here. You'll see we have some of these black plastic or PVC spacers that keep the distance between this woven wire fence and our hot wire. So the woven wire fence doesn't get pushed into our hot wire and short out our fence. In the sheep and goats pasture, we have woven wire and electric. Because the goats like to climb on the woven wire fence. And without the electric fence in front of it, they end up making a real big mess out of the woven wire. And so, we have issues like we have over here, where I'm coming down the line. And the fence gets pretty close. Those hot wires get pretty close. To our woven wire, whereas here they are touching. 
And that is where our fence is shorting. So I'm gonna take my broken section of temporary T-post and I'm just gonna clip it in between my hotline. And now the two fences aren't touching and it's no longer shorting out my hot fence. And if I really wanted to secure that, I didn't bring any wire with me, but I'd take a little bit of wire and tie this to the woven wire fence so it's fixed and can't slide back and forth like this can. The other thing I can do is just poke it through underneath that woven wire and clip it on. Now it's not going any farther than the four inches is all it'll be able to slide. And that should fix our problem. Thank you for watching. Hope everybody's doing well, and we'll catch up with you again soon.